It's Penuel the Black Pen. This is a message to all black South Africans and more importantly to just all black people on the African continent and around the rest of the world. It's a message to black people, but this message can be applied to any other race, really. White people, Indian, Arab, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, colored people in South Africa as well. I was speaking to a friend of mine and he was asking me, what is it that we black people are getting wrong? And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, look, I'm in Cape Town and I'm looking at the streets and the CBD and it's, it's so clean. Why is it not like that in other places? So my answer to him was, look, I think Cape Town is normally, is generally clean because there's a lot of rich people there. And rich people, even where the government is falling short, will make sure that private services um, sort out certain things. And they normally hold, um, they normally hold government and local municipalities to account. If you look at, for example, if you've traveled and you've gone to a township spa, spa is the retailer or well, a township shop, right? And then you go to a top suburb, somewhere in Santon, somewhere in Four Ways, Bryanston, and you go into a spa there. Well, they wouldn't have a ShopRite because ShopRite is more low end. So they'd have a, a Checkers. Look, Checkers and ShopRite are under the same company. Look at the Checkers and the spa in a place like Four Ways, Bryanston, Santon. And then look at a spa or a ShopRite or a pick and pay even in a township. And look at the difference in terms of cleanliness. Look at the products that are there. Look at their bakery, the quality of their bakery. Look at the quality of their deli. Look at the quality of their butchery. The reason it's like that is because rich people, black, white, doesn't matter. They normally hold themselves to a higher standard. And when they're not happy, they complain. The poor people tend to be accepting of lower quality things. Unfortunately, you know, we can't say poor people deserve bad things. We're just saying poor people tend to be more accepting of poorer quality things. Maybe because mentally they think they deserve it. Or maybe it's because they haven't been exposed to a higher quality of things. So that's what I was telling him. I was like, look, if you go to a place like Santon, if you go to a place like Balito or Mtlang, you know, these top neighborhoods, you'll find those places are very pretty, very clean. A lot of the services get sorted out, even though they are not the Western Cape and Cape Town. Then he said to me, I wish we didn't have a black admin running this country. And I asked him why. And he said, it looks like black people really really suck at managing things and that's when i came in and i said no you're making a mistake number one and this is my message to you black people are not homogenous we are not one big monolith we're not one group of the same person we are very very different unfortunately in south africa because of our history of apartheid the idea of segregating and separating black people gets certain black people very angry and upset and they say no but we must unite the reality is that we united during the struggle because we were fighting against a white power. It was easy. The apartheid government said black people must be treated this way. So black people united and pushed back. But that's not to say black people are the same. It was just fighting against one law. As an example, if white people in South Africa, Jewish, Afrikaner, English, whatever they may be, feel like our black government is uh, going against and oppressing white people for being white, they would come together and push back against the black government. Not because they're united, but just for that policy. Black people are different and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm here to tell you it is okay to be different. There is this hypothetical average black person who lives in a township, who is poor or middle class, uh, who sends their kids to maybe a township school, who maybe votes for the ANC and the EFF, um, who's struggling, you know, who wants black unit and we want the land back. I have met black people with a lot of land in this country. I'm talking 10 hectares, 100 hectares, 1,000 hectares, 10,000 hectares. Black people, either they got it through land restitution or they bought it or they are leasing it. But they have land, they find. Some of them are doing property development. Some are farming the land. Some are doing other things with the land itself. There are black people that are extremely rich in this country. And if you've never seen them, I beg you, if you ever get a chance to travel to places like the v &A waterfront in Cape Town. Go to, I think, Helen Suzman Drive and go to some of the restaurants there. Go to some of the other top restaurants in other parts of Cape Town. You will find some black people there. Go to Bryanston, William Nickel, Nickelway. Go to the restaurants there and see some of the black people there. Go to Nelson Mandela Square um, next to Sandton City. Go to Palito and some of the restaurants there. Go to Mklanga and some of the restaurants there. 
and other uppity top places in South Africa. Could be Kabecha, some of the top neighborhoods, could be some of the top neighborhoods in East London. Places like Beacon Bay or Blue Water Bay at Kabecha. Other parts of Nelspreet, I mean, Robert Gourmet has got a super mansion there. Black people are not the same and some black people are rich. Some black people are lazy. Very lazy. And that's not just a black people thing. There are many lazy, white, colored, Indian, Asian people. Some black people are very hardworking. Some black people are amazing managers, given an opportunity. And in South Africa, we're only 30 years deep to be able to actually gauge the quality of black professionals that are out there. You look at someone like Patrice Mutsipe and the way he's conducted himself since he's become a dollar billionaire. Extremely professional. World class. You look at someone like Putu Mantlego from Pimbani and how he carries himself as a businessman. You look at Sim Shabalala, the CEO of Standard Bank, and how he carries himself. And some of the females, Nongkulego um, Nyembezi, I think, one of the top black executives in this country. Someone like Basitza Nekumalo, as an example. These are professional black people that work at the highest level and that are world class. It doesn't make sense to then compare them to other black people who maybe live in shacks, who dirty areas, who destroy infrastructure, etc., etc. We are not the same. There are black people that are futuristic, that are on artificial intelligence, that are on crypto, that are constantly traveling the world. Shout out to Kreit Chabesi. Constantly doing amazing things around the world and collaborate with different people from different nationalities, different countries, etc. They're not even here. There are black people that love heavy metal, black people that love country music from America, black people that have a, a palate that is not into... Uh, insides, I don't like insides, which is the liver, you know, there are black people who aren't religious, they're not staunch Christian and now, hallelujah, Jesus, kulun kulun ami. they're not even cultural, they don't slaughter, they don't believe in burning incense in people, you know, for the ancestors, they are different, so we need to start segregating these black people so that these black people can find each other, number one, and not only each other, but find other races that share their values. I'm big on people with shared values. And then they must build differently. So to my mate, my advice to him was find people that are like you. And it's not just going to be white people. It's going to be black, colored, Indian, etc. And go and live in their neighborhoods. Work in similar companies. And make sure that you're running your areas, your families the same. Because you are of same mind. And leave other people to do their own thing. We live in a democratic country. And you're going to find the majority of poor people and low middle income low middle class middle income are going to carry on voting ANC EFF because they are still hoodwinked into the lies of these political parties but the many other black people that are, should comfortably vote for the democratic alliance should comfortably vote for action SA should comfortably vote for the freedom front should comfortably vote for any other political party we are split already by tribes zulu tosa tsonga Debele, Pedi, Sutu, etc. We're already split. And that's fine. It's your heritage. It's your culture. We are split by various church groups. Anglican, Protestant, Roman Catholic, etc. It is how it is. We are split by nationality in this country. Where there are Zimbabweans. There are people from Lesotho. There are Mozambicans. There are Namibians. There are Congolese people. There are Nigerians. We're split on ideology and the way we do things. And there's nothing wrong with that. So all I'm saying is figure out what your values are. Not your race. The only time you fight racial battles is if you are being oppressed by someone else because of racial things. But where that is not the case. Find people that share your values and build with them. Black people are not the same. White people are not the same. There are so many poor white people in South Africa that the billionaire white people in South Africa don't care about. Very poor white people in certain areas. And if you've never traveled, please do so that you can see them. That's my message to you as a black person. Free your mind, liberate your mind. And don't ever feel like you have to stand in solidarity with people that don't share your values just because you guys share a race. Pen you all the black pen. Cheers.